Opera is all around you wherever you look in Cincinnati, and sometimes you find it in the most unlikely places, like here in the Mercantile Library. The story of Porgy and Bess actually begins between the covers of a book written in 1925 by the Carolina author DeBose Hayward. It actually starts a little bit earlier than that. DeBose Hayward was a native of Charleston, South Carolina, and as a young man, he was quite often unwell. He actually had polio when he was 18. But he occupied himself while in his sickbed by writing poetry and verse. By the time he was a young man, he was actually quite an accomplished poet. He teamed up with a friend of his in Charleston by the name of Hervey Allen. And in 1921, they jointly published a collection of prose stories and poetry called Carolina Chansons. It was the beginning of the modern Southern literary movement. Already in Carolina Chansons, you recognize that DuBose Hayward loved music and was incredibly familiar with the lives of the African-American population in Charleston. As a matter of fact, the Hayward ancestral home was right next door to what would eventually become the fabled Catfish Row of the novel Porgy. By 1925, DuBose Hayward was ready to write a novel, and that novel was Porgy. As a young man, since he couldn't work very much, he loitered around the docks, watching the incredibly strong and tall and broad-shouldered black stevedores load rice and cotton onto boats for export. All of those characters came to life in this novel, Porgy. It was almost fated to become something that was treated musically, because from the very first page of this novel, there's music. There's music in nearly every page of Porgy, as DuBose Hayward tells the story of the residents of Catfish Row. This first edition of Porgy here in the Mercantile Library has just beyond the title page this poem. Porgy, Mariah, and Bess, Robins and Peter and Crown. Life was a three-stringed harp brought from the woods to town. Marvelous tunes you rang from passion and death and birth. You who had laughed and wept on the warm brown lap of the earth. Now in your untried hands, an instrument terrible, new, is thrust by a master who frowns, demanding strange songs of you. God of the white and the black, grant us great hearts on the way, that we may understand until you have learned to play. Just after this book was published in 1925, it was acquired by the Mercantile Library. As a matter of fact, the first time it was taken out of the library was only a couple of years later in 1928, and this book is still here. Just after it was published as well, a young Brooklyn-born Jewish composer by the name of George Gershwin bought a first edition of this book, and it obsessed him from the day he owned it. Almost immediately, he began talking to friends and to associates about how he was going to write his first full-scale opera and base it on DuBose Hayward's novel, Porgy. It took a while. As a matter of fact, it took until the middle of 1934 before Gershwin was actually ready to sit down and write. But when he did, he enlisted DuBose Hayward to help him write the libretto. Now, you have to understand that by 1927, this book was so popular that Hayward and his wife turned it into a smash hit Broadway play. That didn't daunt Gershwin. He still wanted to write his opera. And watching the play, Gershwin realized that DuBose Hayward would probably be a great librettist for the opera as well. This was unheard of. Someone who'd never written a libretto, <laughs> working with someone who'd never written an opera, I suppose. Neil fights all. But Gershwin and his brother Ira had incredible experience in the world of Broadway with a score of musicals under their belt. So it was an established team bringing in a very gifted newcomer, but of course someone who was passionate about his creation. There's a wonderful story told by Edward Jablonski, the biographer of George Gershwin, about how Hayward really proved himself as a member of the team. The way that Gershwin and his brother Ira worked in creating musicals was that George would write a tune responding to the emotional or plot situation of the moment. And then it would be Ira's unenviable task to go and and write the lyrics to the tune that George had already created. Now, once in a while, Ira would get stuck because the words weren't coming easily, so he would write what was called a dummy lyric, just syllables or nonsense that would go along with the scanning of the melody that George had written. So along about middle of the composing process, DuBose Hayward said, could I write a dummy lyric? And uh, you know, to sort of prove myself. And Gershwin and his brother said, 
Sure. So George played a tune that he was thinking of using for a point in the opera when Porgy is reveling in his newfound love for Bess and exclaiming for the fact that, you know, he doesn't need anything in the world because he's in love now. So George played <laughs> and Hayward said, hmm, a dummy lyric, a dummy lyric. What about these syllables? I got plenty of nothing, and nothing's plenty for me. And of course, George and Ira looked at each other and laughed, and from then on, DuBose Hayward wrote most of the words for the opera based on his immortal story of Porky. It is really an amazing journey that this story took, because when you think back to 1925, there was next to no literature where the lives of regular African-American men and women were extolled in prose that reached a national and international audience. The publication of Porgy in 1925 really sparked a literary movement that of course continues to this day with great authors from the South. And of course it inspired George Gershwin to write what is the greatest American opera. Cincinnati Opera presents Porgy and Bess this summer for the very first time in its 92 year history. And every time I walk down Walnut Street during my day to day comings and goings in the city of Cincinnati, I take a look up here at the 11th floor of the Mercantile Building and think that Porgy and Bess for Cincinnati, its start begins right here. For Cincinnati Opera, I'm Evans Barrages. <laughs>